get started. Today's webinar is PV Solar Roof Racking, the Current Issues and State-of-the-Art Solutions. This webinar is part of the Principal Solar Institute webinar series for professional installers, developers, owners, and operators of solar systems. We thank the Center for Environmental Innovation in Roofing for serving as co-host today, and Solon Corporation and Trina Solar for sponsoring this webinar. And be sure to learn more about these companies by clicking on their logos to the right of your screen and visit their company profiles in the Principal Solar Institute resource guide. Uh, first of all, Jan Brand is the President and CEO of Brias Solar Group. He serves the solar industry as a consultant for the Center for Environmental Innovation in Roofing. He was previously co-founder of AGT, a successful distributor, developer, and EPC of solar projects. He found an opportunity to create a consulting and project management firm which continues to lower project costs while representing the PV system owner. In today's discussion, Jan will represent the perspective of the buyer of roof rack systems, um, which will also include the perspective of the PV system owner and the roof owner. Uh, next will be Brian Taliaferro. He's a product manager at Solon Corporation responsible for their Sol Quick commercial rooftop sy system. With his prior experience in system design for commercial and utility scale markets, he brings a focus on driving down costs of the entire system installation process. And then third will be Nico Johnson. He leads Trina Solar's field marketing team, integrating new products into an existing customer base. He has more than six years in the solar industry and spent three years building a solar team of a $100 million annual revenue national roofing contractor. Um, with that, I'm going to change the presentation over to our introduction for CEIR, and then I'll turn things over uh, to Jan. So Jan, go ahead. Thank you, Rick. Uh, excited to be here today representing uh, the Center for Environmental Innovation and Roofing, um, especially uh, the part of the center uh, that focuses on, on the PV rooftop industry called the Center PV Task Force. Um, to give everyone a short overview of what we saw at the center. Um, we launched the PV Task Force in 2011 uh, really to bridge the gap between the roofing and the solar industries and we thought it would be best to start with um, the, the impact of racking systems on rooftops. Uh, so we worked through um, some exciting initiatives since starting that in October. Uh, we launched and uh, we'll be releasing um, the first, first uh, rooftop racking criteria at InterSolar in a few weeks, and we're excited to be doing that. And we had great input from the roofing industries as well as the solar industries. Um, to give everyone an idea of why we did this and why the center focused on rooftop solar, um, the roofing industry places new roof systems on about 3 billion square feet of rooftops, a majority of which are existing buildings getting new roof systems. Um, these roof systems typically have life expectancies of 15 to 25 years. And we thought that it would be perfect opportunity to take those new roofing systems and try to get more of those roofing systems to look at the potential of adding solar assets. At 50% utilization rate of 3 billion square feet, that would mean an, an additional 5 gigawatts of, of PV capacity annually, which would go a long way to extending the backlog and the, and the project flow in the solar industry on a rooftop commercial building. Obviously, uh, we don't only represent the industry, but we also want to look at um, the, the longevity and the impacts of high-performance roof systems. Um, so we studied some of the items that we list here, um, which tend to have some importance. Uh, I won't, and I'll be, you'll see in the presentation today, both from Nico and uh, Brian, that there's, uh, they're going to cover a lot of these aspects. But then obviously we also look at it from a solar why would people put solar on the rooftop? And, and it's something that a lot of us know about um, the, the potential financial as well as technical impacts and benefits that those, those systems can have to building owners. If you want to reach out to the, to the PV Task Force, uh, you can reach us through the roofingcenter.org website. Um, you can also call our offices in Washington, D.C. We do a lot of exciting things. Um, some of our team uh, is always at many of the, the trade shows and events happening around uh, the Americas. Um, you can reach us via email as well as on Twitter. I'm happy to reach out uh, to myself directly as well and point you in the right direction. Um, the Center PV Task Force is growing with the recent addition of Jim Kirby from uh, NRCA, 
who will lead to expand some of the technical aspects of uh, the PV task force. He's the VP of sustainability at um, uh, the center now. And with that, I think I'm passing it back on to Rick to present the next uh, presenter. Uh, yes, thank you, Jan, for that overview of the CEIR. Our uh, next presenter is Brian with the Solon Corporation. And Brian, I'll turn it over to you now. Great, thank you very much. Uh, first of all, I just wanted to thank everybody for the opportunity this morning. I greatly appreciate your time this, uh, today and uh, look forward to continuing this conversation uh, over the following uh, weeks and months as, as we continue to, to grow in this industry. Uh, so first, I just want to start off uh, with a brief overview of Solon. Uh, we have a power plant or an EPC business uh, division, and we've uh, been uh, building power plants over the last few years. And based on our experience with these power plants, especially on the rooftops, uh, we have a, a very unique insight into the industry. So some of the things that we've noticed with the rooftop products uh, over the last few years is that many of these products are very similar to one another. Uh, they consist of metal parts, uh, several pieces, um, a lot of assembly is required on site. You know, this is assembled using nuts and bolts, uh, having to bring tools to the job site, and this it becomes a very labor-intensive process. Uh, there's also not much variability amongst uh, several of these racks that we saw in the industry. So one thing that we also notice is that it's difficult to have a product that fits all the different uh, places that you'll see a rooftop project. You know, I'm, I'm based here in Tucson, Arizona, and I know that the roofs here may not necessarily be the same as in the Northeast, not just in material, but in climate conditions. Um, and then also, uh, you know, several of these solutions, or several of the solar products uh, do have integrated solutions that do exist, and a lot of them are very similar to one another in that we're trying to reduce fuel labor um, by having fewer parts and through material savings. So when we're looking at a roof, we know that, uh, you know, if you're just looking at a Google Earth image, that several roofs look very promising for solar. But as everybody knows, this may not necessarily, necessarily be true. You know, we may see a nice warehouse rooftop that we think can fit one megawatt worth of product on there. But once you get into the project and you understand the structural capabilities of that roof, you may know that the system size may be reduced down uh, to 500 kW. So it's uh, something that we need to be aware of with the structural capabilities of these roofs and that we're having products that have a low weight solution in order to maximize the possible area. Uh, besides the, the low dead weight loads that some of these roofs require, it's also difficult to adequately distribute the weight over the joists and purlins. Very, very rarely are we going to see that the module and the racking lines up perfectly with the joists consistently over the whole rooftop. So we need a product that is very adaptable in these situations. Uh, also, every roof is different, you know, given their drainage schemes, the undulations, the peaks and valleys in the, in the rooftop. So once again, we want a product that is very adaptable. Uh, one thing that we also want to note when, we, when we're looking at these products is that some of these products can cause damage to the rooftop. Uh, as I mentioned before, with some of these systems, they have several uh, parts and pieces that are needed. So one concern that we had with our projects was, let's say a screw was required to assemble it. and one of them was misplaced and was inadvertently put underneath the racking system. Over time, that screw is going to dig into the rooftop and, and cause uh, damage to that roofing membrane. Uh, this damage can then lead to, to drainage issues or leaking into the rooftop, which can be a very costly mistake to, to rectify in the future. Uh, because of these things, we know that for our projects that we had contingencies built into the budget in order to, to better plan for any unexpected things that arose with these rooftop applications. Uh, just like I said, you know, if the structural requirements changed or if uh, 
roof improvements had to be made, it's difficult to know until you dive right into the product or right into the project. And then if we look at the cost breakout for solar projects, we know that there's three main areas. Uh, the first area are the modules. You know, and the main cost drivers of the modules are the silicon, um, wafers, and cells. If you then go into the balance of system, you know, this, this entails, the or this includes the inverters, racking, cabling, grounding, combiner boxes, all the, the remaining material pieces that you need for a project. And then labor is not limited just to installation labor, but it also includes the engineering labor for any project. So that's the design work, getting permits, uh, also going through, uh, you know, financial discussions and any, any time that's associated with working on the project. So based on this project history, uh, this is a high level overview of how we see the cost percentage breakout for our projects. Uh, as you can see, the first line item panels uh, currently is about 40% of the total cost of a project. An uh, interesting note here is that a year ago, this percentage would have been very much, or very higher. However, as everyone here knows, over the last year, the module costs have come down significantly. So as the panel costs are coming down, that means the impact uh, for the remaining balance of system costs rise. The next highest point is the labor. So that's one area that we want to target on how to cut costs. If we can reduce the labor costs, then that means that we can lower our contingency and be more competitive on projects. Uh, the next overview is of the installation time. Uh, these are the steps that, that we've experienced in order to bring in a project from conception all the way to completion. So the first three steps, um, these require the most time. This is the design, procurement, and logistics period. So the design can take anywhere from a week to a few weeks, and that's getting an understanding of what the roof is, what the electrical requirements and interconnect requirements will be, and what the structural requirements will be as well. The next major step is pr procurement. Once we have a design, uh, we'll know what products we want to use. And so then we move forward into uh, negotiations and selecting this equipment and moving on. Uh, the third major part is the logistics. So this has to do with all the coordination needed in order to bring a, um, a pro or the project's construction to completion. Uh, the last two steps are actually uh, the shortest, but they are very cost intensive. So step four is the installation. So uh, rooftop projects can take uh, a few weeks, even if it's a multi-million dollar project. Uh, however, if you're using, uh, or if you have a complex installation, you're having a lot of labor on the roof, and so this adds significant costs. And then the last step is the commissioning. So this is getting the project finally, or uh, getting final approval on the project with the utility company and with the customer. So. Based on our experience with the projects, uh, we wanted to focus on how can we reduce the cost, and that's going to be through reducing the labor needed for any project. So we developed our SolQuick product, which is a commercial rooftop product that integrates a laminate with a racking system. Uh, this system is a, a lightweight system that does not require any tools uh, for assembly in the field, and it's very versatile and adaptable. Additionally, no grounding is required, and this leads to a very cost-efficient system. So let's go over the racking for SolQuick. Uh, the, the racking material is made by, or is composed of Fibrex, which is a wood plastic uh, composite material by Anderson Doors and Windows. You may be familiar with Anderson with their window and door frame products. The Fibrex material has been in use by Anderson in outdoor applications since the 90s. So it's a very uh, proven technology and has been very successful for Anderson. Uh, this material has a thermal expansion coefficient very similar to aluminum. So that means that with varying temperatures, it will behave in a much similar fashion as aluminum. Also, it does not absorb water. So this means it does not rot. So over the 25-year life of a project, 
you don't need to worry about replacing the racking system. Also, even though there is wood in this material, it is not susceptible to termites because the wood is, enca is encapsulated with the plastic. So the termites will not be attracted to the wood in the product. Uh, we, assemble, we assembled uh, the Fibrex material in our Tucson facility. So we'll get 12 foot lineals of the Fibrex material and then we'll cut and weld it here in Tucson. After the rack is assembled here, we'll then use a two part silicon adhesive and attach the laminate to the racking system. The last step of the production process is to run the wire leads through the wind deflector in the back and then palletize the product. So it will come to your site exactly as you see here minus the ballast material. So it's a fully integrated product without any assembly needed in the field in order to bring the modules and the racking together. Uh, it's a very lightweight system. It's about 80 pounds, which means it's about 2.8 pounds per square foot. Uh, as I've mentioned, it's very adaptable design for any rooftop. Uh, we've engineered it for high wind resistance. We utilized a third party engineering company called CPP that did uh, wind tunnel testing on this product. Uh, for those of you not familiar with CPP, they are a very uh, in premier industry leading company that has done wind tunnel testing for several different companies. Uh, by going through the wind tunnel testing and then also through third party structural engineering, we're able to help all of our customers by providing an estimate on what the ballast requirements would be for any project. And then for each project, we can be adaptable if we want freestanding, ballasted, or penetrating solutions. So we're open to any of these solutions, and it's really based on conversations with the customer on what the needs for the product or for the project are. So there is no grounding required for SolQuick. Uh, there is no metal exposed in the system, so it does not mean that you have to come back and ground the system. When the product is delivered to the site, the pigtails for the electrical leads are already pulled through the keyhole slots that you see in the wind deflector. So all you have to do for the electrical connect for the string level connections is connect, is connect the negative and positive leads and then move on to the next system or the next full quick unit. It's, this is done in a few seconds, so this so this uh, results in a very rapid electrical installation. And then the mechanical installation is, is done just as quickly as the electrical. So as I mentioned, there's no tools required. So this means we don't have any nuts or bolts needed to connect uh, soul quick unit to soul quick unit. Instead, what we use is what we call a U-bolt. The U-bolt is a uh, PV, or the UV resistant plastic material that has, uh, been using, that has been used in the field for many years. And this helps connect us from system to system. So if we have four soul quick units together, or if we have two soul quick units uh, connected together, this one tool combines in all situations. So you're also not keeping track of different parts and accessories. This design was developed internally here at Solon, along with consultation from third party and uh, structural engineers. So one of the key benefits to this is that this is considered a rigid interconnect from a structural standpoint. So when we're going over the ballast requirements, uh, the more soul quick units that we have connected in an array means that we'll require less ballast overall as opposed to if these were uh, individually set down. This tool is reusable as well. So let's say you had to remove a soul quick unit in order to perform rooftop maintenance uh, somewhere on the roof. You just uh, very easily unclick the U-bolt and then remove the unit, uh, perform whatever maintenance you need to do, and then replace the unit and then re-snap in the U-bolt system. So it's a very durable, reusable uh, tool. So with this information, we'll just go through a sample installation. Uh, so the first part with any rooftop installation is that you're going to uh, map out the rooftop. So uh, usually this involves uh, surveying the roof and doing measurements for where, where the entire array will be placed. For SolQuick, this is a lot simpler. All you need to do is map out the first corner of the array and then set your first SolQuick unit there. Since this is a fully integrated system, 
uh, all you have to do is place the next soul quick unit next to it, either on the side or behind it, and then move on to the next one. So there's not uh, any additional spacing that you have to do from soul quick unit to soul quick unit. Instead, you use the U-Bolt uh, tool itself in order to know where to place the next system. When we deliver the product to the job site, we will be delivered on a pallet. So this pallet will, uh, can either be crane or forklift to the rooftop, and the system does not require any assembly on the site. So it's not like a traditional racking system in which you'd have the racking coming in one truck and the modules coming in another truck, and then having to do on-site logistic coordinations with that. Instead, once the pallet is delivered to the rooftop, two installers can very easily uh, take a full quick unit off because it's 80 pounds, so it's very easy for them to move these for the, uh, for the whole day's work. And then they move it and set it to where it needs to be on the rooftop. And as you can see here, given the weight of the pallet, it's about 700 pounds. If it's on a, a pallet jack, it can very easily be moved along the rooftop as well. So the first step after you place, or the next step after you place the soul quick unit is to provide the U-Bolt interconnect. And you can see here that we are connecting four soul quick units together. The next step is to electrically interconnect the modules. So after the connection is made, the actual connection point can be put back underneath the laminate through the keyhole slot if you do not want that exposed to the sunlight. And then depending on what the requirements are for the project in terms of ballast or penetrations, those are then applied to the system. So one thing to note, uh, given the U-Bolt and the reduced ballast requirement that it gives the system, you know, you may see ballast, or you probably see ballast requirements on the exterior of the array, but with larger arrays in the middle of the array, you would probably do not need uh, ballast. But this is going to be dependent on site conditions. And so that's an overview of Solon. And like I said, we have two distinct business units, products and power plants. And we're always striving on how we can provide learnings from one business unit to the next. And the SolQuick is a perfect example of using our successful project history in order to develop a new product that meets the current market need. So once again, thank you for everybody's time today. And now, Jan, we had a couple of questions that, come, that uh, came in, if you want to go over those with uh, Brian, and then I had a question for myself. On the, okay. If you see them um, on the uh, chat window. So, Brian, a couple of questions that came in regarding uh, Solon's products. Um, give me an, a, and give the attendants an idea of how do you calculate the ballast requirements for a given project uh, across the country? Sure, okay. So with every project that we work on or every proposal that we work on with the customer, we'll get some site-specific information such as location, building height, uh, parapet height, things of that nature. We will then use the wind tunnel testing that was conducted with CPP and apply it uh, to a ballast calculator that has been uh, reviewed and approved by a, a professional or by a third-party structural engineer that's a professional engineer in all 50 states. Uh, using this information and uh, based on the size of the array, we will um, be able to calculate the ballast requirements. One thing that the wind tunnel testing also does for us is that it provides what's called a wind map layout of the roof. So the wind does not behave the same way across the entire roof. Instead, there's going to be certain areas where the wind forces are greater, such as in the corners or in the northern part of the roof. So uh, overlaying the wind map on the soul quick units and then combining it with our ballast calculator, we're able to provide an estimate of what the ballast requirements are. So we can, um, we can do ballast and we can also do penetration calculations as well. As the project gets uh, closer to completion and as more information is available on the building, we'll be able to provide a more accurate representation of what the ballast uh, will be because as we get structural plans and more information, we'll be able to refine that process.
Excellent. Um, one more question that came in. Uh, have you performed any testing, um, and then what kind of testing have you performed on SolarWinds? Okay. Uh, so Solon has a history of a, uh, or has a rich R&D history, uh, not just here in America, but in our Germany and Italian offices as well. And we really pride ourselves on the quality and testing that we perform on not just every project, but on every product as well. So uh, SolQuick is UL1703 certified, so that means that we did go through the UL certification and testing process for this. Another uh, thing that we do is continuous testing. Uh, just because we have the UL certification, it doesn't mean that we want to stop uh, performing tests on the SolQuick. We want to continue developing the customer's knowledge of the product. So along these lines, we have an R&D test site here in Tucson, one that is outside and one that is inside. Um, the outside system allows us to test real-world applications uh, out in the field, such as soiling conditions in the southwest. Our internal lab is able to develop um, testing for, load, for different load conditions or different drainage conditions. Uh, based on the results of these tests, we will then publish application notes that will be available for the customer. Uh, these tests have been reviewed extensively internally and have uh, shown repeatable results. So we're not just taking one test and, and performing it once and thinking that that's how the case is going to be. We'll go through several iterations so that we know that we're providing the customer the most accurate information possible. Excellent. Uh, I think that's it for now, Rick, if you want to pass it on to the next speaker. Uh, yes, and um, in the interest of time, we're going to go ahead and move on to Trina Solar. There have been several questions that came in during the Q&A. While Trina is presenting, I'm going to have Brian um, answer those and then uh, um, to me in the presenter chat window, and then I'll be publishing those questions and answers so that everybody can see them on the right side. But in the meantime, let me go ahead and pull up the slides uh, for Trina, and I'll turn things over to Nico. Uh, Nico, go ahead. Excellent, Rick. Thank you very much. Appreciate uh, the opportunity to be here with you guys today. Also, thank you, Brian, for doing what I consider to be a great uh, job summing up the inherent roof issues that many of our attendees are facing today. I was not aware, uh, frankly, of the of Salone's uh, history. It's great to see just how long Salone's been around. You know, Trina also is proud to be celebrating its 15th anniversary this year. Getting back to our roots uh, of uh, being birthed out of an installation company back in 1997, Trina has begun to focus a lot more on accelerating commercialization of innovative balance of system components to really help our customers uh, address uh, more core business issues than simply what module they're going to procure uh, and how they're going to do so for, for each project. With the goal really to build more projects, scale their business, and lower their overhead. As a publicly traded company, Trina is one of the largest manufacturers in the industry has visibility into most of the challenges that our installers and, uh, and other installers in the industry are, are facing. We decided to leverage that, uh, that experience from the installation history as well as our strong balance sheet and supply chain to address those concerns we see in lowering the overall balance of system costs that, contain, that continue to constrain project opportunities to a small few and increasingly only to large scale rooftops. And, you know, ultimately, Experience matters, whether you're evaluating and build, building your own project, hiring subcontractors, attention to detail and depth of experience are very important in the decision making process. In a previous role, uh, we ended up taking over a number of projects that either failed to fund due to weak balance sheet of the installer, been uh, overly delayed due to significant engineering hurdles, uh, or been so mismanaged by the contractor that the owner or contractor had walked away from the deal. Uh, so we ha I have uh, more experience, and several on our team actually have experience with uh, rooftop uh, specific construction and solar project construction. Uh, uh, it was mentioned earlier that I worked for uh, a major national roofing contractor prior to my uh, prior to coming to Trina, and had uh, a lot of experience working with a number of leading uh, not only module manufacturers but also racking uh, racking options and solutions. So when we decided to take a look at, uh, at how to be more roof appropriate and, and expedite the rooftop solar construction process and make it easier and, and more roof friendly, uh, we were drawing from a pretty, uh, a pretty wide uh, array of experience. And where rooftop projects are concerned, we've seen a lot 
of things come and go in this industry. Some are roof appropriate and others well. Uh, let's just say this is my favorite green roof. Uh, while this system no doubt increases power density of the array, there are a number of issues here you know, that we really uh, hope to avoid moving forward as an industry. Dust and debris from the neighboring site obviously uh, indicate uh, a need for some sort of water shedding on this project. Moisture and heat build up uh, from, this, uh, from the type of mounting structure we're looking at obviously provide a perfect environment to marry PV and permaculture. So Trina is in that, has come up with the, the Trina mount large rooftop solution. It is an elegant and seamless solution that actually wraps the, uh, the warranty of the module with the racking solution, much in the same way that Solquick provides, and uh, allows a seasoned crew of about of three people to install roughly 110 kilowatts a day, reducing the project duration by a third. It's important to note that uh, a new crew can install around 100 panels per, per person per day, which would equate to around 75 kilowatts a day, using our new tool-free uh, installation methodology and, uh, and uh, technology to reduce labor hours, skill level, with reduced labor hours and, and improve the, the efficacy of the crew on roof. Also reducing the potential for roofing surface punctures. As you'll see, you can easily mate the Trina groove, which is simply a groove in the edge of the panel, to the very low part count that is included in the Trina mount system. And the intent here really is to lower parts and skews, lower the amount of uh, components that need to be taken up on roof, and lower the overall weight of the system on roof as well. The uh, elimination of long rails and uh, a rail substructure uh, reduces weight, reduces balance system costs, reduces logistics, etc. Um, and our components actually mate into the module groove in a way that provides UL comp compliant auto grounding of the hardware. Increasingly theft is an issue on uh, solar projects. Uh, our proprietary mounting system actually mounting the module into the uh, into the racking system without the use of tools, and without the use of bolts or other uh, accessory hardware, allows for a fairly theft-resistant system that requires proprietary tools to disassemble the system. And the compact packaging uh, delivered on one pallet is, uh, is, a, is a logistics saver, to say the least. I mentioned that it is uh, marked with our 10-year material and workmanship warranty, the same as the module, which is to imply that Trina wraps the entire product with our uh, with the Trina warranty uh, and and you do not have to go to a third party for that service and this is uh, this goes back to whether or not uh, one uh, vendor versus multiple vendor model is more efficient for the installer and our goal with this product uh, is more focused on allowing the installer to install faster uh, with fewer crews and with fewer logistics headaches in, in the background. A few other key features. You can see up close the groove profile of the panel in the first picture. This groove strategic design, as apart from serving as the mounting platform, also allows the accessory hardware mounting from junction boxes and wire management solutions to DC optimizers and AC inverters, further reducing crew time and skill required to mate boxes and accessories in a roof-friendly and appropriate manner. The standard strut profile of the row connectors connecting one, one row of panels to the next allows uh, accessory hardware attachment in the field of a snap in a, in a snap with uh, off-the-shelf products that would mate to any uh, standard strut technology. Similar to Solquick's U-bolt, the Trina mount row connectors comprise what's called a rigid interconnect, which may minimizes the need for ballasting in a system. And the system has been high wind performance tested to minimal ballast needs. Third party tested up to 120 miles per hour. One common question is what the tilt of the array is. We have one standard tilt, that's 11 degrees to maximize. And that is what we've tested up to 120 miles per hour with. To maximize energy harvest on the roof while still minimizing the overall wind load. The Trina Mount product also allows installers to expand the system around rooftop obstructions like skylights and vent stacks 
with relative ease and flexibility with the ability to add as few as one panel per column without a minimum module bank, at which is typical for a uh, competing racking product. Uh, and without the, <clears throat> without the need for additional ballasting in that, in that process. We've run a number of comparison models, both in testing and in the field, to validate the savings claims installers are experiencing. In a head-to-head -head comparison with Panelclaw, arguably a leading racking manufacturer, the Trina mount system showed around nine cents per watt savings when taking into consideration the intrinsic and extrinsic savings appreciated from the system. I'm gonna unpack this a little bit in the next few slides. We aim here to show really that the savings is not simply in the cost per watt difference between one racking product and the next. When an installer is seeking scale and capital or operational efficiency, the ability to minimize crew size, crew complexity and install complexity, as well as overhead and back office compliance can have a huge impact on the bottom line profitability of the project. And ultimately, that's what we believe keeps more of you guys out there installing projects and growing the solar economy. We looked at what would it take to do a 10, a 10 megawatt uh, project, 10 large rooftops of a megawatt each. And ultimately, it, it allows an installer to execute your projects in roughly a third the time when you take into consideration the on and off roof benefits, the uh, indirect and direct benefits that we've mentioned here. Uh, I mentioned earlier that a seasoned crew can do roughly 150 modules per man per day. And we found that a, a, a crew coming in fresh uh, with relative uh, inexperience to this product can install around 100 modules per man per day or about 75 kilowatts per day. And as manufacturers, one of the main benefits we believe we provide is helping you minimize the multiple, multiple vendor management. We mentioned that earlier. To the extent that products like Soul Quick and Trina Mount can allow an installer to order more of the product and fewer parts from one vendor, overall costs, logistics, and on-site headache can certainly be mitigated. We've done a number of uh, in-depth calculations looking at uh, rooftop labor, grounding, and other types of savings. And the real key to, to focus in on here is the 72% savings on the project from simply uh, reducing the number of days to install. When you take a project to megawatt size down from 21, 4, 24 days to nine days, not only are you rotating your crews a lot faster, but you're also looking at roughly about a $60,000 savings sitting on the roof uh, that, you can, uh, that you can harvest from operational efficiencies uh, that, are, that are intrinsic and in getting your crew on and off the site faster and addressing uh, the installation requirements without the headache of having to be an engineer to install the product. Now, a favorite question I have, and I want people in the industry to ask their integrators, is why did you choose my particular product, part, my particular technology or product for my environment, and what were the two alternatives you considered? I don't know if you guys have ever experienced this. This looks a lot like my college dorm. Wouldn't want to uh, spend a whole lot of time talking to the guy that designed uh, this uh, this specific. Uh, system, if you will, nor this one, for, in fact. And detail uh, is the devil is in the details, and how you pay attention to design backhouse is very critical to how well your crews can roll out your projects uh, in the field. Uh, the integrators and developers should be able to articulate to their customers the advantages and disadvantages of varying solutions and approaches, and, wh and why they chose one versus the other. Likewise, materials management. Uh, Details matter when you've got a crew of you know 10 to 20 guys standing around on a site waiting for bolts to arrive that some for some reason were not uh, ordered appropriately or, or likewise. Or worse yet, all your modules are on site, all the racking or inverters are still yet to arrive. So front end planning and design uh, is critical to project success, and that's why uh, I like kind of like what Brian said earlier that labor is not limited to only infield labor. There are back office labor requirements that often go unaccounted for. That's why Trina created a, our design services team. And as such, we're addressing resource availability, turnaround time, and expertise around the engineering of a system as well as deploying a project. And the solution we've come up with is a complementary design package that includes budgetary layouts, budgetary PV assist or, or solar advisor modeling, uh, and designs featuring cutting edge Trina 3 mount, Trina mount 3 racking. And we have a simple form that can be submitted to our team. 
that within 72 hours will yield a budgetary layout uh, PV sys model and uh, and the a workable design that can be then presented to uh, to your customer. And ultimately, what we hope in this process is that we help alleviate some of the overhead costs as well from an engineering perspective that our partners in the field are experiencing from uh, from the, the the engineer requirements around some of the the design parameters. So as I mentioned, we have the assessment side assessment form. I have the link here if you want to check out Trina Mount 3 on our website. There are certainly some inter interesting videos there uh, which go into more depth and detail about how the system goes together and what the advantages and disadvantages there are. Uh, you will, as I mentioned, receive a complete proposal package including a price quote, budgetaries, etc. Uh, through, through, our, through our design uh, website. And our ultimate goal at Trina Mount again is to provide a product to installers that is roof appropriate, fast and simple to install, minimizes logistical headache on and off the roof, and ensures a more bankable product project, which ultimately means not only do you get more projects done in less time, but you have a much higher success rate in getting those projects funded and off your balance sheet. I want to thank you for taking the time to join us. If you'd like to see those videos I mentioned, you can go to our website at trinasolar.com, uh, and uh, I'll turn the the conference back over to Jan. Now, Jan, before you begin with the questions that have come in, um, I just want to let everybody know that in the interest of time, we're going to continue to answer these questions and post them into the Q&A um, chat window. They'll also be posted in tomorrow along with the slides and the um, recording, and everybody that uh, registered and attended will receive an email with that. So I'll um, show all of the presenters information and Jan, you can go ahead um, with the first question that came in. Great. Uh, thank you, Nico, and uh, for the great presentation. Uh, first question that came in, um, how many megawatts have been installed with Trina Mount? Jan, I think to date the, the exact amount of uh, megawatts installed is uh, about two or three megawatts. We do have uh, projects that are both uh, in the uh, manufacturing as well as permitting stage about to be installed uh, that well exceed uh, the, te the teens and, and of megawatts. So uh, by the end of this year, we expect to have around 50 or 60 megawatts of Trina Mount installed in, in North America. But this is also a project, a product that's being sold worldwide. We have, so, and, and so I don't have the account uh, at hand for the amount of Trina Mount that's been installed in uh, Europe and Asia at this point. Excellent. That's a great, great look forward. Um, another question that came in is, uh, is Trina Mount available with a 72 cell uh, panel? Jan, that is a great question. In fact, uh, it's one that we had been asking internally uh, very, very much uh, intently over the last few weeks. And while I can't speak to what our forward operations are going to be as a public company, what I can tell you is that we've heard the request loud and clear from the field for a 72 cell or you know, 280, 290, 300 watt Trina mount option as more of our installers are going forward with using the larger scale uh, module format, both on roof and off roof. So uh, again, while I can't make forward looking statements, know that we've heard you loud and clear and we intend to address that in, uh, in a very short order. Some breaking news sounds like. Um... Another question, what's the difference between Trina mount and the ZEP racking system? So ZEP is actually a, uh, a very close partner of Trina. Those of you familiar with the ZEP product will recognize this. In fact, as the ZEP uh, group, we are a ZEP licensee, and this is a ZEP compatible uh, racking system. The Trina mount 3 product, in fact, was co-designed by Trina and ZEP. So as opposed to the residential roof solution, which is Trina Mount 1 and 2, uh, which is also you know, roughly identical to ZEP Systems 1 and 2, Trina Mount 3 is a co-designed and co-marketed, co-sold solution that we were actively involved in designing with, uh, with uh, ZEP. So we're proud to be partnered with ZEP. They're a great uh, solution. We looked across the market at all of the different racking options available. And, uh, and when Trina decided to, to throw her hat in the ring in terms of being able to wrap our uh, uh, credible, bankable uh, brand and warranty around a product, uh, we aligned very closely with Zep and helped them develop this product to bring it to market. 
Excellent. And then a, a similar question to what we asked Brian. Um, what is the uh, and what is and how do you determine the weight requirements of Trina mount? So a similar uh, answer actually to Brian. So without going into uh, great detail, the uh, the practice throughout the industry for determining weight requirements is very very similar for all racking products, and uh, our engineering team does uh, leverage uh, both design experience as well as uh, PE uh, engineers on staff who do a wind category analysis, wind uplift analysis in each uh, zone, and, uh, and do a wind map study delivering back a report that says exactly what the ballast requirements are going to be uh, per panel, per square foot, et cetera, for the given project. And it varies. If you're on the coast, clearly you're going to have more ballasts and or penetrations. If you're inland and you have a lower wind uplift requirement, you're going to have fewer ballasts. But on average, our product is between four and six pounds per square foot uh, installed. Excellent. Well, fantastic. I think uh, I, I see Brian's been answering a lot of questions. Um, I think that's all we have so right now. Uh, Rick? Uh, yes, thank you. Um, and there are a couple other questions that had come into the Q&A chat. Um, Nico, I'll uh, leave that chat window open. So Brian, and you can continue to answer those as I assign them to you. But for our uh, audience, in the interest of time, we will go ahead and wrap things up here. The presentation, um, the contact information is available here. Please contact any of these uh, individuals if you have further questions. Again, the webinar was recorded, and the, uh, the webinar and possibly a copy of the slides and then also the questions and answers from the webinar will be posted tomorrow, and you'll receive a follow-up email with that. We uh, thank everyone for attending. Thank you to all of our presenters, also to our sponsors, Solon Corporation and Trina Solar. And again, you can find more information about these products and companies um, on their site profile in the Principal Solar Institute. Our next webinar will be July 19th. You can see that on the PrincipalSolarInstitute.com website. It's about solar in the military. We have a couple of retired brigadier generals who will be talking about the strategic view of the U.S. military's um, efforts to buy more solar power, and then also the tactical view from an installer's perspective. And with that, we will close things up. And again, I'll leave this window open for some Q&A. And uh, Nico, Brian, and Jan, thank you again. If you want to thank the audience. Thank you, Rick. Thank you very much. Yeah, our pleasure. Thank you so much for having us, Rick.